Well, hello and welcome back to the House of Valentina. I'm Valentina and today we're hanging out in my home and we're chatting about the most controversial things I did to my house when I renovated it. And boy, I think if you're new here, you're gonna be like, well, I'm thinking there's some obvious things that have happened here, okay? If you saw the house before, this was controversial. It still is. I still get comments about the fireplace. This is not the only controversial thing I've done in my house, and I can't wait to share with you the things that I have done while renovating my suburban home outside of Atlanta and the crazy things I've pulled, okay? And that I've actually personally ended up loving. Some of you absolutely hate them and tell me frequently in the comments, and I'm like, hey, you do you, all right? So. I am a very adventurous person. I like to try things. I'm the type that I'm like, eh, let's just try it. Let's go for it. Why not? Life is short. Why not try something? That's kind of my mentality towards things. So uh, this is gonna, yeah, I think we're gonna have a lot of fun chatting about all of these and I'm excited to hear your feedback. So if you are not a subscriber, make sure you hit subscribe because we've been taking you on the journey. We started off literally, it's been almost eight years since we moved back from being overseas and in since buying the house about seven years ago we have renovated almost every inch of it we've got a few last things to do but overall i have not held back <laughs> i've done every crazy idea i wanted and it's all here on the youtube so i hope you'll join us be a subscriber it's free to join so why not so let's jump into today's video all right, let's start with the obvious. Your crazy girl decided to paint the fireplace black. You know, this actually wasn't the first crazy thing I did. I actually painted this entire room out first in a really dark gray. I mean, the whole thing was dark gray, okay? Did anybody, let me know in the comments if you remember those days. I'm just highly experimental. I will pretty much try anything. I mean, other than like drugs. <laughs> like, I don't want my brain cells to be gone, okay? It's like, that's probably the only thing I'm not willing to try. When it comes to food, when it comes to decor, when it comes to clothing, I'm like, I'll try that. I just love the adventure of trying something new. And especially when it comes to paint, it's just not that big of a deal to change it. Not to me, at least. So for me, one of the biggest things that I have done in my home is that I have decided I decided a couple years ago that I didn't like the, the gray. I felt like it was just too dreary and it just felt too heavy. So I just went through and painted the whole house out in white and oh my gosh, do I love it. I love living in white. While we were living in Scandinavia, we lived in an all white home and I loved it. And I thought I wanted to try something different when we got back here and I was like, nope, just want the white walls black, white walls back and I want to add black. I just love living in a black and white home. And I guess overall, that is one of the most controversial things. People still write in, man, the things that people say, they're so mean. Oh, your house looks like it was burnt. Oh, your house looks cold. Ooh. I mean, I think people actually think that they're gonna hurt my feelings and I'm like, I really don't care. <laughs> I'm living in my dream house, you live in yours. I say, if you're gonna take anything away from this video, let it be that this is your home, so try things, try something new. What's the worst that happens is that you just paint over it, right? Buy a new rug, sell the sofa that you don't like and buy a different one. Like this is not life or death here, okay? We're not working at a hospital, guys. This is, this is supposed to be fun. It's supposed to be an adventure. I think people just take it all too seriously sometimes. So for me, painting that black was the best decision I ever made. I thought about painting it a different color and I just couldn't bring myself to do it because you know what? I love it. To this day, I just love it. It just makes me happy. I love the color palette. I love adding in a little bit of beige and kind of taupe colors and having a little contrast there. But honestly, it's not going anywhere. I love it. I think it's amazing. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments though. Another crazy thing that I did is that I painted out my dining room. Actually, it, it's technically a dark charcoal. It looks black on camera, but technically it is dark gray, almost black. I painted out the whole darn thing. People thought I was crazy. <laughs> They will still think I'm crazy. What was she thinking? I painted the trim. I painted the trim work at the baseboards, the trim 
in between, right? I've got some, some crown molding. I've got some like, you know, some paneling. I painted it all. I painted it all. I painted the ceiling. I painted everything. People think I'm mad and I'm like, I absolutely love that room. It's probably the room that I spend more time in than any other room because it's where I edit, it's where I work from, like it's my office, it's the dining room. I just absolutely live in that room and I love it. Now, it's not the only room that I color drenched though. I do that throughout the house. So I also did a crazy thing. I painted my bedroom black, loved it might go back to it at some point. And then I did something even crazier. I painted it beige. <laughs> All these things, I mean, your girl, it's crazy, right? So controversial here, she's nuts. I'm willing to try anything, okay? It's just paint. So I painted it out in beige. I just really love it, especially with all the black accents. When it was first all beige, I was like, Ugh. like it's just, uh, like I can't do, uh, I, it's just not my thing, okay? So let that be controversial as well. I don't do, uh, <laughs> who wants to live in that? I don't know, not me. But I color drenched, which just means that the baseboards, the walls, the doors, the ceiling, the, any trim, Everything is in one color. And I love doing this because I really love the way that you just feel just truly enveloped in the color. It makes the room feel a lot bigger. It makes it feel really cohesive. And it also minimizes the busyness of the room. I do like, I mean, I don't think my house looks very minimal, especially with all the green, right? I got people, like if I say my house is minimal, <laughs> The amount of comments that I get down below, they're just like, that's 25 items. I'm like, who counts? <laughs> Is there a minimal police? <laughs> I don't know. But I do like a more minimal and calming backdrop. This is this is nice. I can go more minimal, but I'm really enjoying the way it is right now. And that's pretty good for me. So uh, yeah, I think color drenching, uh, being more minimal was definitely something that was pretty controversial, but then then going the opposite direction, controversial as well. So I'm telling you, either which way you turn me, I'm gonna be controversial. <laughs> All right, a couple other things I did. I removed the upper cabinets from my kitchen. People actually thought I'd lost my mind. My neighbors were like, where are you gonna put your stuff? You guys were commenting, where are you gonna put your stuff? <laughs> What are you thinking? How do you go without upper cabinets? How can it be a kitchen without upper cabinets? And I'm like, well, it's really simple. I'm gonna take this one wall on the other side and I'm gonna put these huge pantries in it and I'm gonna replace all of that storage on the other wall and I'm gonna add drawers where there are cabinets so that when I open the drawers up, everything is displayed and you can see everything. And unlike cabinets where you're trying to reach back and you can't reach all that stuff. And well, I'm short, so I can't reach all that stuff. <laughs> now you just open the drawer and it's like, oh, and everything is sitting inside and you can see all your stuff and there's no space left unused. And yeah, I, I have, have I regretted taking down the upper cabinets? Yes and no. In one sense, I, I really love living in a kitchen without the upper cabinets because I like how open it feels. I like that it doesn't feel so heavy. We don't have a lot of window light in there. And even though I added a couple windows, it still isn't a super bright kitchen. So for me, I like the fact that it doesn't feel heavy. I also like the fact that I could put a really nice hood up. I could put big pieces of art. I kind of end up loving it, but I'm less minimal than I was when I did that. And sometimes I'm like, eh, I could have used a little bit more storage. More storage than I ever thought I would ever need because I've just gotten to where I'm like, I just like to have things. <laughs> it, I haven't gotten to where I want it badly enough to put cabinets back up, but you'll have to stay tuned. You never know, I might do something else controversial in the future. This is a big one. And you guys are just like, you are crazy. What did I do? I took down all the blinds. I took down all of the blinds. And I'm so sorry, but the little walkthrough that we did of the house, I, you know, I wasn't doing YouTube the way that I am now. So I just didn't go through the house and do a whole bunch of like clean shots of before and after the way that I do now when we do makeovers. So those the shots are a little bit sh the shaky. Okay, I did it on my iPhone. 
and it was a few generations ago on that phone, but uh, you can see the house in those shots. You can see the before pictures. Every single window in the house had a blind on it. Even the front side lights, which are now gone. Um, yeah, that's another controversial, controversial thing. Took out the doors, uh, but originally every single window in the house had a blind on it. And it was like living in prison. I hated it. So I just took them all down. And the light that comes into your house when you don't have blinds, it's just, oh so wonderful. It's like living in the clouds. It's just amazing. I absolutely love it. Have I put up curtains in some of the rooms? Yes. Have I put up Roman shades in say the bathroom or on some of the glass doors? Yes. Still need some privacy some of the time, usually in the bathroom and the bedroom are the main areas. You know, we like to sleep and do other things in the bedroom. It is, it is nice to be able to block out the potential that someone could look in, right? But I do think that whether you wanna sleep in the room or you just like to have the option of privacy, curtains and Roman shades, great options. Uh, but for me, blinds, just, ugh, I hate them. And I know there's a lot of you that love your blinds. I'm not gonna take them from you. It's just for me, it's controversial and I didn't like them, so they left. I did a couple other kind of crazy little things. Uh, one of the big things that I did was I brought in a smeg range into my kitchen. Yeah, so not only did I take all the cabinets down, <laughs> not only did I paint it monochrome and stark black and white, not only did I put up big artwork and, you know, do all these crazy things, paint it white, you know, um, then I also put in a, an unknown brand, <laughs> put in an Italian range into the kitchen. And I have to tell you, it's a little bit fussy. At times I'm like, I don't even know what the temperature is sitting at. I kind of just say, turn it to seven o'clock on the dial. I don't even know what temp that is according to the oven. I just know that's where food cooks the best at. <laughs> they're, you know, they're, they're a little bit clunky, but I love it. I love it. When I purchase it again, yeah. Yeah, I would. It's just so pretty. I love the knobs on it. I love, I just love it. I would look at Le Cornu as well. It's a little country for my own style. I think that's why I like the Smeg so much. It's just a little sexy. But I would also look at Mila out of Germany. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I, I think going for an imported range and or other appliances in your kitchen, it's a little scary at times. I mean, that baby had to come a long way. <laughs> they are sold here in the US. I do have a vendor here that I, as a designer, I was able to go through, right? But, you know, it's scary to people when they're trying something that no one else on the street's really doing, right? And they didn't run to Home Depot to get it. But in the end, I've been thrilled with it. The other thing that I did is that I put in a claw foot tub and I gotta be honest with you, you know, some of these weren't really all that daring when I did them to me because I've been living in Europe for 10 years. We lived overseas for about 12 and about you know nine, about nine of those, you know, give or take, were spent in Europe. That's just rounded. It. It's like it's 10 in, in Europe and about three in Morocco, okay? So uh, we lived in Africa, we lived in Europe. And so for me, buying European appliances and doing a claw foot tub, those were not unusual things because a lot of people do those in Europe. <laughs> they don't maybe do the call foot tubs as much in Africa, but definitely in Europe. Like it's, it's something that's readily available. It's something you see a lot in French chateaus and it's kind of like, it's just sort of a normal thing. It's not that out there. Now, does that mean that everyone in Denmark was doing a claw foot tub? No, but a lot of people do it in England. A lot of people do it in France. And I've just always been a lover of European style. So for me, putting the claw foot tub was pretty controversial because people were like, wow, not only did she put in a claw foot tub, <laughs> She put in a black claw foot tub. And there have been times where I'm like, you know, my style has kind of evolved a little bit even since when we got back. If I was gonna do it now, would I put in the claw foot tub? Probably not, I'd probably do something more modern. The problem is, is that dang, I was gonna say another word, um, then I have to beat myself out. <laughs> and I don't know how to do that, so I'll just say the other word. <laughs> that dang claw foot tub is so amazing. It is so good. It's cast iron. It weighs like a thousand pounds. It is absolutely incredible. Holds that water. Man, it, it heats 
up so well and it just holds that temp. I, I can sit in there for an hour and the water will still be hot. It is incredible. It's my signature hardware. I'll leave a link for you. They also sell other options. I am thrilled with what I have bought from Signature Hardware. It's amazing. So yeah, um, love the clawfoot tub. Most especially love the black clawfoot tub. And uh, yeah, and would I switch it out to be more modern? Probably, but I'd still do black. <laughs> I love a black tub. It's just sexy, okay? It's just sexy, it's different, it's cool. And I love it. So. Those are just a few things that I've done while renovating our home over the last about seven years that were very controversial. And people have definitely thought I was a little bit crazy, but eh, there's worse things than being called crazy. That's a goal. We look like the crazy ant, you know, like this, the crazy bird lady. I, I love that image of being a little bit out there and eccentric. I, I've always loved that idea and I am all in. I love it. So it, hopefully you guys will think that's a controversial. I know it's not really like that crazy, but <laughs> I think it's a bit of fun. Let me know what you've done in your home that was controversial. Let me know what you think of the things I've done in mine and let's have a really good conversation down below in the comments about this. And um, I'm gonna let you guys go. Make sure you hit subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you in the next one. Until then.